revision video on monitoring your performance in National 5 PE. For your PE portfolio, you need to know the following things. You need to be able to name two or more methods of monitoring. You need to be able to describe what monitoring is. And you need to be able to explain the reasons why it is important to monitor your performance during your training program. So what is monitoring? Monitoring is a continuous process to see if your personal development program is working and if you are improving with your chosen weakness. If you are seen to be improving, you will make certain changes within your program. And if you're not seen to be making progress, you will make changes as well. Think of this as if there was a patient in the hospital. Doctors and nurses would then change the level of care that they are giving the patient if they were not making progress, if they were not responding well to the treatment. And if they were starting to get better and their health was starting to improve, they would then again change the treatment that they are giving the patient. So as we've said, monitoring is all about checking for progress. If we are seeing progress, then we will make changes to the PDP, new targets will be set and the training programme will be made harder. Here are some examples of different methods of monitoring. At National 5 PE, you need to be able to describe two methods of monitoring for two different factors. We're now going to look at each of these methods in turn. These methods are retesting, coach feedback, training diary and video comparisons. The first method of monitoring that we're going to look at is retesting. Retesting is a process of recompleting a test which you have done and comparing the results. From this, we'll then be able to make judgments about whether or not you have improved specific things within your PDP. On your screen just now, you can see two performance profile wheels that have been completed by the same performer whilst they have been trying to improve their speed and their anger. The one on the left hand side comes from the first week of the programme and the one on the right hand side comes from week four of the programme. And here we can see that the performer has made significant improvements in their speed and controlling their emotions. Think about retesting as though you were reconducting a science experiment. It's really important that when we do retest, we use the exact same test conditions so that we can measure our results accurately. And if we can see an improvement in the data. The second method is a training diary. A training diary is something which is completed by you, the performer, after each training session. In this diary, performers will often record what they did in terms of what types of practices they did, what approaches they used how they felt during the session, whether they felt good, whether they felt sluggish, whether they felt unfit, and they might write down any coach feedback they received on their technique or on their level of fitness. They may also record any times and scores. And on the right hand side, you can see an example of a training diary, which I completed when I was training for a half marathon. You can see the number of runs that I did, the dates that I performed those runs on, whether they were inside or outside, how far I ran and what my times were and what the pace was. This allows me to check my progress and my level of fitness over a period of time to monitor my performance during my training programme. The second method of monitoring that we're going to talk about is video comparisons. Video comparisons is where you film yourself performing a certain skill and you then compare the video to your own performance a few weeks later to check for improvements in your technique. This video could also be compared to a model performer of that skill. This is a really useful way of viewing your own performance and it's extremely useful because you can pause, rewind and watch the skill in slow motion and break it down into certain stages. This will allow you to identify improvements in your technique and also things that you need to work on in the future. So we've looked at different methods of monitoring. Now we're going to look at if we are seeing progress within your PDP, what changes can we make? Some examples that changes of performers might make to their personal development programme are shown on screen. They may choose to use more sessions per week. For example, if they were training twice or three times a week, they may choose to make that three or four sessions per week to improve their fitness continually. They may decide that they want to increase the length of their session. For example, if they were training for 45 minutes, they might now decide to make their training session an hour. They may decide to change their training partner and they would do this if they have reached a level of fitness which is greater than their training partner or perhaps a skill level which is greater than that of their training partner. They may decide to change the approaches which they are using and they would choose approaches which are harder and have more pressure and are more similar to game situations. Alternatively, if we have seen massive 
levels of progress and a huge improvement in our performance, we may choose to pick a new skill or a new focus or a new weakness altogether and change our training programme. On screen now is how we can make our training easier. We would look to make our training programme easier if we were not seeing improvements when we have been monitoring our performance or alternatively if the performer suffered an injury during the training programme. Some ways in which we can make our training programme easier would be to decrease the number of sessions per week, taking it from four sessions per week to three or two sessions per week. You may choose to make your sessions slightly shorter and try and make them more productive where you work at a higher intensity for less time. You may decide to change the approaches that you are using and remove some of the pressure from your practices. For example, you may choose to move away from conditioned games and go back to repetition. Or if you were using repetition practices, you may go back to using shadow practices to try and groove the technique. We're making all of these changes to try and build confidence within the performer and keep their motivation high when completing their PDP. We're now going to look at reasons why we monitor our performance. At National 5 PE, you'll be asked to explain why it's important to monitor your performance development. On screen now are some reasons why it's important to check for progress. It's important to check for progress to keep your motivation high. If you are seeing progress, then this will help you to feel good about yourself and continue to put in effort when things get difficult. You also need to continually challenge yourself and if you are improving your level of skill or your level of fitness, it's important that you then make your training programme harder as you improve. It's important to monitor and make changes to prevent boredom. If you continually do the same thing for eight weeks, you're going to get bored and you're not going to be able to put in lots of effort. It's important that we're able to track our progress during this journey and we're able to see that we're improving to make ourselves feel good and to then make some changes in our PDP. Also, as we start to meet our short term goals, it's important that we set new short term goals to help us move towards our long term goal. Thanks very much for watching this video on monitoring performance. I hope you found it useful. Please feel free to check out more of the videos on the channel for National 5 PE.